So Rochelle Mead, welcome to Penguin Teen TV. You're our first author guest. It's very exciting. Hey Felicity, it's good to see you again. Firstly, questions about the Vampire Academy world. Obviously it's all finished with these six books and we've got the spin-off Bloodlines. Question to you about what's coming next. Is there more Vampire Academy? Is there more Bloodlines? Oh, I wish I could give you all the information on what's coming next, because there is definitely some very cool stuff uh, that I'm about to announce, probably within the next month or so. Unfortunately, I can't give you details on what my next project is, because it is top secret at the moment. Uh, but as soon as I'm able to announce it, uh, you'll be the first to know. Okay, spoilers for Up to the Fiery Heart, everyone. Block your ears if you haven't heard this, but you basically left us on the worst cliffhanger ever. I mean, that... It was up there with Shadow Kiss. When you were writing this, did you know this was going to happen? You kind of knew, didn't you? I did. I knew it was coming. Uh, actually, much like Shadow Kiss, I knew from the time I sat down to for write the first book in the series uh, that there was going to be kind of this terrible thing going on in the middle of the series. So I apologize. I know it causes people agony, and I've gotten a lot of sad, sad emails about the ending of Fiery Heart, just like I did with Shadow Kiss. Um, but, you know, just like that book, hang in there. Things could get better, maybe. We'll see. So with the Bloodline series, the fandom has been, not slow, but a little slower to come on board with the whole Sydney adrian thing. But by the fiery heart, it's Sidrian madness. Has that excited you? Does that keep you enthused that people are really adopting the Sydney and Adrian relationship? Yeah, I love it. Uh, I, I can't believe that I've actually started using the term Sidrian as part of my own vocabulary and that it's become so widespread. I, I love seeing how excited people are about them. I, I loved Rose and Dimitri. Their, their relationship was super epic, very dramatic, and of course had its uh, ups and downs. Uh, but Sydney and Adrian's uh, is a whole different kind of thing, and I love that people are into it because even though it's crazy, it's you know a fantasy vampire-human relationship, there's actually kind of a real world element to it, some of the problems they have. And so I'm so excited that, that people have uh, gotten on board with that. Uh, of course, Adrian's so easy to love. It's, it's hard not to be on board with anything he does. There's a lot of love out there for a lot of your side characters. Everybody loves Eddie and Jill, but uh, there's some even some smaller side characters like Wolf and Rowena Clark. Do you have a fun, are they your fun characters to write or how do they come about? Yeah, all the side characters are fun, and in fact, the more fun I have with them, uh, the more it really shows uh, in the book, I think. You, you can tell if I'm bored with a character or if I'm out of love with someone. I, I just don't write them very well, so I try to just have as much fun with my, my side characters as I can. Uh, and those ones you mentioned are, are a couple of my favorites. I, I love Rowena. I love that she kind of verbally smacks Adrian around. Uh, Malachi Wolf is, is definitely near and dear to me. He actually has his own Twitter account, so if anyone uh, is interested in following, you can you can get his wit and wisdom. Uh, although I think he's been kind of quiet lately. I'm going to have to, to get on him about that to see if we can get a few more Malachi tweets out there. You seem to kind of love or kind of hate, we think kind of love, torturing your fans with these crazy cliffhangers. Is Silver Shadows going to be that way too? Silver Shadows does have kind of a cliffhanger. Um, if it makes you feel better, though, it's not quite as brutal as the Fiery Heart cliffhanger. So, I mean, don't, don't get me wrong, you're still going to be screaming for the next book when you finish Silver Shadows, but I, I think the pain will be slightly less, so maybe instead of, like, a 9 on a scale of 1 to 10, it'll, it'll just be a 7. I hope that helps. Is there anything you can give us a hint about in Silver Shadows? Maybe it's about Sidrin, maybe it's about Jill, maybe it's about Eddie, maybe it's about more returning Vampire Academy characters that we might see again. Oh boy, that's that's tough. Uh, let's see, what can I tell you? Um, it, it starts off, it's a very dark book, and if you, of course, read the ending of Fiery Heart, you understand why why that's the case. Um, so, so it starts off that way, but I, here's what I'll tell you. There is some deeply, deeply romantic, swoon-worthy stuff, uh, especially at the end. You, you guys, I think you'll forgive me for, for some of the terrible things I've done to these characters when, uh, when you get to some of this romantic stuff. Uh, so people, I think, are really, really going to love that. Um, that isn't to say bad things still aren't going to happen, but you'll be relieved to know that, that occasionally good things happen to these guys, too. Give us one word to describe Silver Shadows. Intense. Uh, it's all intense. The The dark stuff is, is intense. The happy stuff is intense. It's just there's nothing nothing that's particularly low-key about this book. It's kind of just go, go, go. 
Uh, and uh, I think once you start reading it, it's going to be one of those things you keep turning until you're done and suddenly a whole night has gone past.